Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and in today's lesson we are looking at how to procedurally texture your sculpts to give them a stylized look so you don't need to retopologize, unwrap and texture paint your models. If you like what I do then check out the other playlists on this channel for free content or visit my website gabbit.co.uk for more courses much like this. I have talked a bit about this before with how to color your sculpts in Blender 2.9. You can take a look at that video. This is a slightly updated version of that and I give a few more options. So do check that out if you want a more simplified version. This is not overly complicated, but you might want to look at my Nodes for Beginners series. That will give you an intro and help you understand all about nodes. The playlist is in the description. Now this will only work in cycles because we're using the geometry node pointiness. I'll do a different video about how you can achieve something fairly similar in EV, but it's just not quite as good. Also, it's worth noting that I'm using optics for denoising. It gives it a sort of plasticine type look, unfortunately. It's working in this case because it's very stylized and it looks cartoony, but that might not be the effect you're going for. If I turn that off for a moment, you can see it's a bit more subtle when we haven't got that denoising on. So that's worth bearing in mind if yours looks different. I'll turn that back on for now to speed things up in the viewport and make it quicker for you guys. I'll click on the base stone here. All the materials are set up in exactly the same way. So with those base bricks selected, I'll take you through the material. Now the most important thing is this pointiness node. I've used this a couple of times, as you can see, in this color ramp here and in here as well. So I've used it for the roughness, but also for this overlay here, which I'll go through in a second. But to start with, I use it with a color ramp here. So to find the geometry node, shift A and it's under input geometry and the pointiness is at the bottom there. And I plug that into a color ramp. So color ramps are found shift A under converter and there's color ramp just there and they look like this to start with. You can add points to your color ramp. If I click on this last one here and add a point, you can see it adds it just before and you can take them away with the minus button there. And I'll show you the effects of this pointiness into this color ramp by control shift left clicking on that and you can see the effects there. Now, in order to do that, you must have the Node Wrangler installed, edit preferences, add-ons, make sure the Node Wrangler is ticked and you can control shift left click on different nodes and see the results of that node by itself. So I've got the pointiness going into this color ramp and I've set lots of different colors here, sort of stony, greeny, bluey colors and they go from dark to light like this. And in fact, I'll show you the effects of that on just a normal color ramp. So if I control shift left click on this one, which again is connected to the pointiness. And if we zoom in on that, usually you have your dark around 0.4 and your light around 0.6. In this case, it's slightly different. But what that does is it takes the crevices, makes them a bit darker and takes the edges and kind of highlights them and makes them a bit lighter. So by plugging that into a color ramp and changing the colors with this one here, control shift left click on that, you can see that I've got a bit of color variation in there. So lots of blues, a touch of greens, and you can move these across and add them in as you see fit. So if you want it to be more gray, this one seems to be the dominant one at the moment, but maybe if I bring this green across and open that green up a little bit more, we can see a bit more of that. I can even swap them over. if I want that green to be affecting it in a great deal there. And at any time, if you want to see the results, we can control shift left click on the principled BSDF to see the updated results. So you can see how you can add some color to that. I'm not sure about green rocks myself, so I'll move that back and bring it out to here. And we've got that more sort of bluey, gray look. So control shift left click on that. That's the color input we've got at the moment. Now to add a bit of variation to this, I've also added these and mixed them together using soft light. And I'll talk about that mix node in a second, but let's have a look at these. So control shift left click on the Musgrave texture that I put in here. So that's a basic texture that you find shift A add textures and there's your Musgrave. I've put that into this mix node here and it mixes these two colors together. So let's see the results of that. Control shift left click and you can see this black and white information is being converted into these two colors here. The one below it is exactly the same but just with a different scale. So here's this Musgrave texture compared to this one and that goes into these. So it's a very subtle effect. These two colors are quite close to each other as are these and then I've mixed them together with another mix RGB. So these are mix RGB nodes and it will take these two, mix them together and make this. Now here's what it looks like with the default, which is just a mix, which is fine. But I wanted an overlay, which takes these and overlays them on top of these and takes kind of the brightness and darkness of them and increases them and decreases them. So that's the overlay blending mode just there. Blending modes are really useful. They can change the color and saturation 
create some weird effects, overlay with sort of light and dark areas. These are all the lightened ones and these are all the darkened ones. And it's best to just experiment with those, also look them up to find out what they do, but a lot of the time it's about experimentation as well. So that's the final output of these sort of mixed colors just to add some variation and I've mixed it with this color ramp here into the pointiness with the soft light. So we've got this color variation going into this one. This is our main color and these are affecting it with again another overlay mode. So it's a soft light this time, very similar to overlay but, but slightly softer, usually a little bit lighter. You can see the difference between the overlay there and then the soft light there. So that's the result of those two mixed together just there. Then I've used that pointiness node again. I've taken them into this color ramp here to add a little bit of shading and highlights and emphasize them. So it's gone into here. So it's gone from this one to this one, just a little bit more emphasis there. And that again is the overlay node. Takes the light bits and makes them lighter, takes the dark bits and makes them darker. I've also used the pointiness node to go into here but you can probably tell that I've switched the black and the white around. That's easy enough to do, just like this and this. And it really highlights the crevices with white and the extremities with black. I'll just bring those down just a touch more, there we go. And this one I've plugged into the roughness. So the black bits will be shiny and the white bits will be rough. So let's see the whole output of that. You should be able to see that these extremities are a little bit reflective. However, the denoising does kind of negate that effect quite a lot. So that is an overview of how I stylize my sculpts without unwrapping and without texture painting, just procedurally. And if I click on the different ones, you can see they're pretty similar. This one with the wood, I didn't add any of that musgrave variation. I thought it kind of worked on its own, but you can see all the different colors I've used in there. I've used a sort of purpley color for the shadows and then out towards the oranges and yellows for the highlights. And you can kind of see them in there. If I control shift left click, you can see the results of that. Then that combined with the overlay adds a bit of brightness and darkness to the extremities and cavities. Then the final look with the roughness node in there as well from the pointiness gives us this. So let me know what you think and if you've got any different ideas then do comment below. Thanks for all the support, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.